It's another week in the foyer reference household and we are starting off with a PSA. Friends and lovers, for those that indulge or don't indulge in horror and didn't realise that there was social commentary and there were themes for the voices that have been unheard, the joke's on fucking you. Keep up, you queer phobic superhuman superman motherfuckers. <laughs> That's the sort of tasting we're getting in today. Let's get on with the show. Friends and honey lovers, welcome back to the Four Year Reference Podcast. I'm your host, Katie. And Oti. Welcome to the Beaverse, where symbolism and commentary collide and sting the unaware. <laughs> Indulge in another tasty sweetie man with us this week mm. with Candyman. Now, literally, we have a sweetie man this time. A literal sweetie man. But we mm. do love our film buster sweetie men. Um, go and check out our District 9 Hardcore Prawn mm-hmm. episode for the title alone, friends and lovers. <laughs> Ooh. Um, this was essentially child's play, if you'll pardon the pun. Compared to Halloween, the timeline for what we're covering um, this week is definitely a lot more clear, a lot more succinct. Today we will be covering the original 1992 Candyman and the 2021 Candyman. Again, middle finger to the motherfuckers that got annoyed about Suicide Squad movie titles. Because <laughs> we've got the same title here. Um, we are aware that there are sequels that spawn off the original, um, but we will be covering the original and the 2021 version this week. In way of stats and general information, the original 1992 Candyman uh, superior... <clears throat> sorry, sorry, I, I got into first Did impressions. Did leak? <laughs> <laughs> as well as my liquids, um, but they are as sweet as honey, OT can assure you if you're nasty. Um, we have director Bernard Rose, for those that are aware, um, the original Candyman was written by a white man, um, Clive Barker. He's also um, the creator and the mind behind Hellraiser as well. Um, in way of stars, we have Virginia Madsen, Xander Berkeley, and the ever iconic, ever eternal, all of the splooshes to Tony Todd. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think it made in box office? Do you think it was a cult classic at the time? Do you think it was a catastrophic hit ot how are you feeling maybe not ca- catastrophic but i think it made some few bucks yeah just past 50 mil i'd say oh maybe not maybe inflation if you get your abacus out uh-huh. uh the budget six million dollars and a worldwide gross of 25.7 million dollars mm-hmm. wow okay not too bad. Well, the too bad is coming over because we're talking about the 2021 Candyman now. Uh, general stats and information. Love, splooshes and accolades to Nia DaCosta. Um, smashing box office records as well. Nia DaCosta is also credited as part of the screenplay as well as Wynne Rosenfeld, Jordan Peele, stars Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Tiana Paris and Nathan Stewart Jarrett. Also shout outs to our Domingo because we love a Domingos in the four-year reference household. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure if Key and Peele were still going, they would talk about the Domingos with the Liam Neesons of it all. <laughs> Don Cheadle's algae rhythm internet is telling me the budget for the 2021 Candyman was $25 million, with a worldwide gross of $77.3 million. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we've been pussyfooting. We need to just get to how we feel <laughs> <laughs> about the films. We'll we'll speak about the films individually. But before we do that, I just want to get some first impressions on, you know, the original Candyman. What I love to hear with OT is whether it was part of his childhood, whether it was something that he's known and loved for years or did you watch it recently. Um, so just give us the first impressions, I guess, for the original 1992 Candyman. So I watched this as a kid mm-hmm. and I really didn't understand it at the time. I knew there was some Hulk guy and that's pretty much what I took from it. I didn't fall in love with the movie. I feel like there's disrespect. You, call, you It's like you refer to like the arrow guy with Hawkeye, the Hulk guy. 
<laughs> no, seriously, imagine watching this as a kid and thinking, oh, wow, this is amazing stuff. Mm. Uh, I think there was a lot of nuances and discussions that went over my head pretty much. And watching it, I didn't watch it up until we did it together a few years. I think, what, what was it, last year? Yeah. Yeah, so I was aware it existed. I never really fell in love with it. I don't think anyone in my circles was a huge fan mm-hmm. but having to you know watching it again with you when i was you know my faculties were all intact uh-huh. it, it, i was like mate this is some deep shit super solid for 1992 man bloody hell i enjoyed it great year yeah and i think the kind of the cadence that they did with it as well was you know nothing too much on your nose i think the storytelling was nice i enjoyed the characters quite well i think it was done brilliantly so you know what i i'm sitting here having watched the purported sequel mm-hmm. and i'm feeling quite a bit um conflicted are you edging no nah. which is a sort of this is this worst sort of way to be conflicted without the edginess of it all <laughs> With OT minus the bite. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a limp conflict. Limp conflict. I need to start a rock band with that. A honey lip conflict. Mm. We can walk around with honey pussy hats. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, first impressions, the 1992 version. Like you said, we watched it a couple of years ago. I really enjoyed it. I wasn't screaming at the rooftops about how much I loved it, but I really enjoyed it. Um, but I think this is the very interesting thing. And we're kind of dabbling into first impressions of both of these films where I loved and appreciated this 1992 film more in the lead up and I guess after because we've watched the 2021 twice now yep so we watched we watched the 2021 when it first came out fresh without re-watching 1992 and we felt the way we felt and we'll get to where we're going um but just recently we watched the original 1992 and then we watched the 2021 and yeah if when we get to Christmas we'll talk about our ratings but um whatever my numerical rating was when I first watched it a couple of years ago it has definitely moved itself up in the ranks. True. You know, I think the, the the sad bit for me is even with my tax put on it, I don't think it even comes close to what uh, the 92 version did and was and how it outlaid everything. How about your Jordan Peelsey's tax? Not even. You lost that with us, right? Yeah. I think his tax was cut in half then. <laughs> We'll we, move on. But we did say we would try and rewatch us because it's been a few years now. Yeah. Um, to give it a go. But I think it's natural that we're, it's, it's like symbiotic, right? So we're talking about 1992, but we're also reflecting um, on 21 as well. So I'm just going to amalgamate all of my first impressions. I absolutely agree with 100% of what you're saying. Um, in 1992, it felt very effortless. Um, I, I know there's a sense of reclaiming the icon that is Candyman and, you know, having an all black cast and production um, in the 20- 2021 film and we talk about representation a lot hashtag oscar so white and all of that um but here becomes the problem right because we talked about the halloween franchise i'm not gonna spoil it i don't watch shame like ot it's been out for decades but people like me i only watch it for the first time in the 2020s um but halloween wasn't that great so i guess it kind of makes sense how it was mystical stutter stutter stuttering like it kept trying <laughs> to redo the franchise um on the other hand the 1992 Candyman is almost kind of perfect to me like I get and I understand that it's from the lens of Helen Lyle like the protagonist is a white woman I understand that but the nuances were more existent in 1992 than they were in 2021 and I really like the way that they you know we can talk about it as specific sort of themes but even the way that they outlay a topic like gentrification it was done so I naturally think, i think nuance left the window with the 2021 version yeah we're definitely going to go into more detail but I, I guess just the sort of sampling um that's generally um how i'm feeling um going to 2021 do you have any first impressions i guess before we go into detail that you want the listener to know now that might keep them listening if they're not already turned off i get the need not even the need i get get the direction they wanted to go with this mm-hmm. i understand that i applaud it but 
somewhere between the idea and the execution we sort of lost the way of what Candyman was is yeah. who how they're supposed to carry out this movie it felt a bit too fluffy the, the build up was so slow the characters were on, I didn't really love any of the characters they're just fluff pieces there were too there were too many it's like the most recent Halloween um timeline there's too many characters to focus on it was just fluff 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 like if uh, if I'm caring about Yaya's character Anthony McCoy or I'm caring about Brianna and her backstory or Brianna's brother and yeah. a lover like me you're stretching me too thin right now yeah. for not and there's not much in there anyway true you know um what the 92 version did well is at least we were focused on one thing yeah and, and everything around helen you know it was very succinct the, we, there was a story and we were focusing on what the story was yeah, and then you could start building and start seeing ah oh, shit man you know yeah. and even at the end where they were explaining how Candyman isn't just one person it's a fucking beehive it was stellar they didn't paint it out for us they didn't yell it out like they did in this version yeah. Candyman is not one man Candyman is a fucking beehive hundreds of years we got that by the fact that Helen is the one who fucking appeared at the end <laughs> killing everyone yeah. you didn't have to fucking spell it out it was spoon fed to us you know I, I don't I, know I, why we don't need spoon feeding uh, well, most of the time there's the aspects where I've gone to a movie I said mate you've left too much and said and i said you know like in halloween all of my qualms was there's too it's too there's too much unknown yeah but with this this spoon that's shoving that spoon deep in our mouths my rectum was feeling it i don't know i'm enjoying that oh. watching the actions and hearing your voice out like that i'm enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> i think i think i need to visit otis domingos in a second <laughs> <laughs> no, I, abs- I absolutely agree with you. I guess just um, on our both of our first impressions for 2021, there were too many characters to focus on. And if we're talking very generally about the 2021 film, we're talking about horror icons. Like Candyman is really up there, and I need to I need to flick my Tony Todd bean uh, at another time because he, I think he's the sexiest. I will say, um, but in regards, I, ooh, I'm getting flushed between Ot's rectum and Tony Todd's Candyman. <laughs> I'm getting very distracted. Um, but because so so when you when you think about the first film, yes, the protagonist is a white woman. It, there was an omnipresence about Candyman. Every motivation that Helen, it was kind of funny. Oh, spoiler, 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 white woman, white woman, white woman. But it was kind of funny every time Helen Lyle will like pass out and then she'll have like a, a knife in her head. Yeah. Like it was kind of like we were following her and 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 I guess the the eventual tethership between her and Candyman, right? And it was it was the intrigue. We were following them and them only. Unfortunately, um, I don't know. I've I've never explicitly on this podcast complained about multi dimensional characters, but there were too many characters that had too many dimension, and we had to care about all of them. May I drill that back in and say there are too many characters who are all fucking one dimensional. Wow. I think they had too many backstories May, and dimension. May, I'm, I'm coming for you, Anthony. Okay. I love Yaya, but Jesus fucking Christ. It what, was a Nana. What did he have to be angry about? Sorry, friends and lovers. I guess I'm at a stage where Nana is funny to me. <laughs> is that a trace song of a bloody reference? If our demographic understand it. <laughs> Um, he seemed to be angry about everything when he seemed like, I feel like everything fell on his fucking lap. Yeah. He had Brianna who paved way for him. He was yeah. living in a fucking can we, condo rent can, free. Can we talk about it? But the girl was pissed off at everything. But it's like, you didn't even pay rent, dude. Like, why, why are you, you angry? Why are you <laughs> shouting at the people in the fucking <laughs> museum? What did they do to you? Yeah. Mate, you should be fucking kissing their fucking legs for letting you... No, is it kissing their feet? Not legs. Legs in you the can, be- You can kiss me anywhere, <laughs> OT. Like, I was like, where did this come from? Because you're taking a few drinks, now you're going to badmouth them because what? Because if, then- if they loved his art, he would be eating that shit up. And then we don't get to have this spoiled Anthony behavior continue because they're killed in the next scene. And I'm like, cool, fair enough, they're dickheads, but 
they did nothing other they didn't do anything wrong to this guy yeah. to behave like such In, a dick if we're talking we're talking about like the structure and the mechanism of gentrification is bad guy yeah? cool but for on an individual level these white people didn't do anything to you anthony mccoy and i'm sitting here thinking this fucking privileged black dude yeah feeling the pain of everything i'm like mate look around look yeah. fucking around yeah um bloody hell man like but you're living in the buildings where the projects used to be you're part of the problem you're the artist the whole force yeah. is coming for you mate yeah no absolutely i absolutely anyway, agree anyway and, and that's that's a discussion we, we shouldn't even be focusing on because i think how in the 92 version they did it they explained it so succinctly and i was there thinking without, fuck sakes without having to without having those little factoids on like a music video trying to explain to you everything that's happening yeah and re-watching it a few years ago i was thinking fucking hell how there's no way i would have gotten that back then yeah when i was fucking six seven eight or whatever age i was watching this yeah so it, it works on layers uh yeah and, and i think in, a, in as much as i love the attempt i love the the what they wanted to do i love how you said attempt you're such a shady bitch <laughs> no, no 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 like i i really do appreciate what they, they wanted to reel back like this is our candy man this is our story this is how we want to tell our story but wow did they just shit get messed up into i ideologies and 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 too much nonsense <laughs> in between but i guess let, let, let's go to the question that i posed earlier do you think that they even needed to improve or even reclaim candy man reclaims a bit heavy do you think that the 1992 film needed to be improved because that's kind of what was happening in 2021 no because the, in, in essence it's a sequel but <sighs> Because for me, I, I guess, I guess to 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 lay it out better, I don't think it needed an extra film as a sequel in the 2020s. So for me, there was already a barrier to entry for enjoyment. That's more what I'm framing. I'm not trying to six the minute you. I get that. Maybe you're Domingos, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> I get that, and I understand that. I think those there's an effort in trying to make it, you know feeling like Candyman could have been more mm. or should be more. And like, I get it. I, I just didn't like, <laughs> mate, there's a, a lot of things that we can be aggrieved of yeah. as, as black people or whatever. And watching it laid out in a way that just seemed a bit too fucking in your face. Yeah. It felt, uh, do we need to see it pan <laughs> out this way? <laughs> At the end of the day, Candyman, an anti two version. We we knew what he stood for in the community, and this way, I just feel like, mate, we just got an artist. I don't even know why the fuck he had to be an artist, but we got an artist. Oh, can I just say, I really like vomited over that shot where they had the camera staring up at um, Anthony McCoy, and he had his fucking tongue out, like painting at the canvas. Gross. <laughs> I was like, I don't care for this mania. Yeah, but but it, it did have some good production value this movie yeah yeah uh, uh, yeah like, like if, i feel I, I think if we're going to capture off like first impressions i i really feel like if we're talking about the offerings 1992 does it better through way of messaging through way of cohesive story through way of satisfying character arcs what 2021 did did well just so i have it on the record that i do have positives for the 2021 film it was very stylistic it wasn't until the second time round um that i noticed the logos were like switched um and the way they had the the sort of city landscape it was like you know shot from underground i, I didn't really notice that until like the second time round so i guess that's shame on me but i'm nasty so i like that shame so the st stylistically it did very well um but i also feel like story got sacrificed because of that there was no real story things were just it was like a tarantino um you know once upon a time in hollywood 
Pulp Fiction sort of film where things were just happening to Anthony McCoy. There was really because when we started the film, did we know where it was going to end? Did we did we did we even anticipate the offshoots of his character development? Things were just happening to him, and also at the same time, you know, we talk a lot about loving a firm foundation, and this 2021 film doesn't have legs without the 1992 film. You can't just watch this on its own, which maybe it, it you shouldn't because it's a sequel. But come and fight me motherfuckers this film doesn't stand on its own because so much of the 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 grounding is laid in 1992 and you're just relying on the fact that you have loved candy man for decades that anything else in this film is a bonus but none of it really lays the groundwork itself mm. Yeah, and I get that. I think what the bits that I enjoyed was seeing Vanessa Williams back. You yes. know, <laughs> it was good. And to know that Anthony was the kid, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wow. Okay, you know what? They got some things. They had legs, mate, but they want to use them. But like, question, I guess maybe, maybe like newspapers had integrity back then, but like, surely he would have had some sort of semblance of him as a baby, but I guess not. Maybe they didn't publish his name in the newspaper and family secrets stay family secrets until the grave, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I get that. I think I understood why Anne Marie had to hide all that shit. You don't need that as a kid growing up. It's just too much baggage. I don't get why Anthony didn't want to understand that, but I feel like I just need to say something fucking positive with this. (laughs) (laughs) But can I just say, um, you know, Queen and Slim, I talk a lot about on the podcast about one of one of the most interactive sort of audiences when we went to go and watch Queen and Slim in cinemas when we finished the 2021 film instead of any sort of cheering or a nod I heard a very labored sigh from OT <laughs> <laughs> um it, it was definitely a lot um Let's move into themes. I want to talk about the themes and we can naturally cross over between um, two of the films. One of them straddled successfully, um, the other not so much. I want to talk about the sense of the urban legend and I guess I'll preface this. This is exactly what I mean. In the 1992 version, there was so much of the talk of community. There was so much to talk of loss. There was so much to talk of trauma, Mm. right? So much bad shit was happening in the projects that whereby it be religion, whereby it be culture, in this sense, it was the use of an urban legend. Candyman. Mm-hmm. Whether because we do we do straddle fantasy and reality in both of these films, whether this one entity committed all of the crimes, it kind of became a sponge for the pain of a neighborhood to be able to explain unspeakable tragedies that happen in the projects. Yep. Right. So even though it, it might not be true, you've got Candyman, you've and got you candy can, man for it. and you can, you can, I guess, um, uh, allocate the pain that you have to Candyman, like Anne Marie, in order for her to like go to her job and look after Anthony. Like she, everyone needed that sort of grounding, and Candyman was that. Right. It can be religion. It can be culture. In this sense, we're talking about urban legend. Which, like, if I can reference Archer. Noah, like if we talk about anthropology, eventually urban legends do form part of the culture, right? So Candyman really became the device of that. And that was so successfully done in the 1992 version. And there was such a sense of community. So even though, unfortunately, but even very recently, we can have Green Book. (laughs) But very, like, even in 1992, even though we had a white protagonist, there was a focus on community there was a focus on the neighborhood there was a focus on the projects and i want to talk about you know the the demonstration and the portrayal of urban legends because i feel like it was done very well in 1992 
2021, like we do have more of a presence of a black cast. And I would say, apparently not you, but I would say that there are backstories and dimension from a lot of the characters, but it always felt very just the characters. It didn't feel like it spoke to beyond the characters, which is essentially the whole point of Candyman. Candyman is supposed to be an urban legend that again becomes that vessel, that vehicle to distress and decompress all of that pain. And in this can, in, in the 2021 Candyman, they kept talking about it, like theoretically, but there wasn't really much portrayal. Because how many times we saw Jake in the 1992 version, um, we saw a lot more characters in the 1992 version, and we understood how contextually it fit in the concept of urban legends. What do you think? 100% agree. I think the way we get to see how these characters are laid out, mm-hmm. in as much as you want to call them multi dimensional, I think to me, especially when you focus on the protagonist who are, I'd say is Anthony, is the fact that a lot of the stuff just happens. Yeah. You know, it, we don't get a feel of him as as a character per se yeah it's just him being reactive all the time yeah absolutely. it's just him bouncing off things that happen every single time yep. and his fascination with, with with switching his stylistic artistry and what he wants to paint or put, to portray mm-hmm. it just feels a bit uh, why like i didn't buy it i didn't <laughs> it did I, I didn't feel any sort of resonance or connection with him. And it angered me because I felt it was the first time. I thought it was just me watching it wrongly the first time. Having to watch it again yeah. and feeling the same way, maybe even more so than I did, mm. comes to me in a way that if we're portraying Candyman as this urban legend who we can sort of unload our burdens and everything bad that happens to us in a community as the candy man did it. Yeah. Then candy man did that. Candy man <laughs> did that. Then where does this all tie into these people? Yeah. Where does it tie in? Because they seem quite removed from that sort of society anyway. Yeah. And oh man, it just it just felt I just felt a bit lost. I felt lost and I was angry about it for a while. Um you know what was really interesting? Because we talk about it spoon feeding us up the rectum. We need a merch for that. Or maybe not friends and lovers. <laughs> um we talk a lot about spoon feeding, we talk a lot about le- not leaving a lot to um the imagination, but there was also a lot of assumed knowledge as well, or at least assumed emotional resonance. Like we had to come in already loving Candyman and not questioning that. But then they also it's it's, it's like the exact sort of situation you had with Passion of the Christ where <laughs> we came with all the fucking baggage and you were there thinking, hey, mate, where's the backstory, mate? Where's this coming from? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like you have to already love it in order to not necessarily buy into the premise because there wasn't necessarily one. Hey, oh. um, but you're right. Things were just happening to Anthony's character and we just had to continue going along with it. Although William Burke, our Coleman Domingo, um, he kind of was the mustache twirling villain in this but that also doesn't make sense as well unless we unless we say there are like satan's helpers and that's what william burke was and one thing that i didn't understand with this version is is the only way to make candy man yeah is if you're murdered by a cop or or what like he pretty much orchestrated the whole well he was already chosen he started his skin started fucking rotting which again is another thing <laughs> he, Far had, out. he had his whole raw ass hand out in the publics without anyone saying ew <laughs> mate what's up <laughs> he was just walking out with a rocking hand nothing not even going to the doctors by the time he went to the doctors he had got all up his fucking neck and they didn't even check that yeah contrary to rotten tomatoes he was 90 percent rotten by the time he went to the <laughs> hospital <laughs> Wow, it was insane. Oh, uh, he didn't even try to fucking hiding this shit. Nope, nope. I kind of want to talk about gentrification again. Mm. We keep saying the word gentrification, but that's what they kept fucking doing in 2021. For those that have already watched the film, I, I guess, you know, you already know what we're talking about. 
But with Helen Lyle's character, it was explained so perfectly that all of these buildings were built the same until there wasn't necessarily a buffer to the project. So it it became consumed to be part of that emerging sort of class, right? Mm -hmm. But it was the exact same building. They just put plaster walls up. Yep. Come on now. Come on now. It was explained so beautifully. And dare I say, the element of whiteness is very effective in 1992 because that's the, where the oppression starts. Like in 2021, we, I guess, unless we're talking about William Burke, there was no real opposition. There was no real necessary sort of face to where all of that pain is coming from. Not necessarily to say that Helen Lyle is a problem, but her with her Terrence Howard equivalent husband um, were out at that dinner and we had, you know, that fellow, he's actually the one. So William Burke in 2021 is the one that tells us the story of Candyman, how it started in 1890. But we have this white man explaining it to us in the 1992 version, but that's exactly how it feels. You know, academics in a stuff room wanking each other off dick to floor silicon valley reference Mm. right and i think it was done so perfectly because the callousness the indifference that he had when he was explaining the story of the original candy man played really well to the audience because it becomes it kind of became part of academic books that just go on a shelf right he's like oh i wrote this article 10 years ago talking about candy man what do you as a fairer sex woman know about anything and i think that element played really well um in the first film you know and there's nothing wrong in in talking about these things and laying it out in a, in, a, in a black and white or in a sort of non nuanced way fine but when we come to see a movie that's layered in in in, in its messaging w- with some intellectual thought behind it you know a movie that you get out of the cinema and you start thinking to yourself hey you know what i'm gonna think about this issues that are affecting the society like this but when i come out of this i'm just thinking eh, you already told me <laughs> all right you know when, 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 you, when you i think there's, a, there's an onus when you're writing a script that's not bt's Karen, and you say <laughs> is the nuance level the same as bt's current if it is mate you need to fucking rewrite that script yeah. i think that, that, that's the base level but look you- at bt's current and you feel like oh mate i've laid it out too thick let me write some intelligent shit up here but but to be fair bt has some great layered offerings currently just not karen yeah. I think what we pretty much watch is BT's Karen as potatoes candy man. <laughs> with a bigger budget. <laughs> with a bigger budget. With a bigger wig budget. <laughs> and me, like, I understand these issues. I understand all that. And we don't want to castigate people. And we also don't want to be those, we don't want to be on the same side of the white critics that don't understand why the 2021 film became woke when the 1992 wasn't. We don't want to be on that side either. But, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I really wanted to love this. I've always spoken about my support or, or my love of everything that black people do. And I try to go out of my way and watch and read and donate and do whatever I can mm-hmm. to father. And, and this is a, Kenya Barry sort of effect at what point do you say that <laughs> like are you for black people if you if you have some sort of like constructive yeah. sort of criticism or, 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 or do you love it by default or is my onus on this just to say fucking ace mate it was a good movie and, and nothing else because at the end of the day it's fucking watchable i'm not gonna say it's a bad movie it's not horrible by the extent of it yeah. it's not you're gonna sit there and you're gonna think oh it has some good moments you know there's some gory stuff it's not really a horror movie because it does, it's not really scary aside for some few shock horror gore scenes but you know what if they had a better focus on candy man it would have been a horror movie yeah but, but it's not it's, it's it's a step removed yeah so i'm sitting here thinking cool aside of the gore stuff what is this and and there was there was so much of a focus and i guess that's why i say into the beavers there was so much of a focus that any black man unfortunately through history um you know 
isn't necessarily Candyman, but can become the mantelpiece of Candyman. By saying any black man can be Candyman, he lost his face, mm. right? Even within this film, it wasn't really. And then you get to a point where you realize that Anthony McCoy is going to become the mantelpiece for Candyman. But neither does a horror icon be, I suppose. What I didn't understand is why him at the start. Because you get to see him, his tongue by the bee. And then when you learn that he's the kid from the 92 version, I'm like, oh, okay. They'll say he's probably chosen, which they said he did. Mm. And at that point, I'm like, with everything that's gone on, I'm still left wanting. Yeah. Well, because it's like, we can talk about 1992, but I, I guess it's either way. Like, we're going to be super positive about 1992, or we're going to have some real constructive things to say about 2021. I want to talk about 2021. I want to talk about Brianna for a second. Mm. So, 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 the, so we get a backstory about her, and it's some heavy shit. Like, her dad commits suicide in front of her. Sorry, friends and lovers, trigger warning, but we did say spoilers if you've watched the film um, already. And then it, it becomes her searching for her soul in tortured artists that she tries to save. Mm. I feel like there are some some really good elements in the 2021 film, but it's all in the same film that's about an already iconic horror guy, like Sweetie Man, if you're nasty, that we didn't, like, it got in the way because if it's not about Candyman and it's not about Anthony McCoy it's about five other different characters mm. and it really all just got in the way there's I don't know like I, I like to have a succinct sort of storyline and you know M. Night Shyamalan on the beach old give me a twist I suppose if you like but it's kind of good to know that we're going to have some sort of de development based on the stories or the plots that are being introduced to us and I don't know like she had a she had so many scenes that were dedicated to her. Mm. So what is it? Is it Candyman? Is it 2B Candyman? Is it the wife of the 2B Candyman? Like, where are we? <laughs> yeah, and, and I think one of the things that I loved about this is, you know, we've watched horror movies where there have barely been any black people in, mm -hmm. you know, and we'd always shout on this screen, no black person would ever be so damn to do that shit. But LL Cool J, he got spared by Michael Myers, so that counts for something. Yeah, but anyway, when <laughs> don't, don't ignore my LL Cool J erotica. <laughs> it's not what I was to say. What well, in this movie? At least they did some of that stuff, mm. like Brianna going down to the to the what was it the old building and then opening the door to the basement and you're being all dark and she's like, nope, nope. exactly. Don't fucking mate. Well, the, the life is fucking hard enough for us to go down off some fucking dark basement. <laughs> But that's the thing I enjoyed about the movie. At least it was self-aware. It's okay, OT. <laughs> this this episode will go down in history as KT bringing all the qualms mm. and and OT being forced to say negative things about a film he loves. <laughs> <laughs> i guess while we're talking about love and accolades i want to shout out two people from the cast that we haven't talked about at all um nathan stewart jarrett which i believe we first became aware of him in the four weddings and a funeral mini series with melisandre not melisandre what's her name in game of thrones miss sunday you mean Yes, I believe if it's correct, that's what I mean. <laughs> um, it was nice to see him. Like you said, um, his partner Grady was trying to do Candyman at the museum exhibition and he's like, black people don't play that shit. So shout outs to him there. But also shout outs to Carl Clemens Hopkins, who is in Hacks, which is a brilliant series. And I don't know if we've even mentioned how much we love that show. Mm. So he's a bit problematic in that show, but <laughs> um, not, not to the point of faux cancelling, but yeah, he's kind of a problem in that show but we also love him um in that role so it was nice to see him again mm, for sure let's talk about william burke's character in 2021 oh man so he he wants to unleash candy man upon the people mm. <laughs> what do you think about that like i mentioned a bit earlier like satan's servant do you think that's what it was because part of what i really enjoyed about um 1992 was the agency you chose to be the victim of candy man mm -hmm. but now it's like you're being forced to be candy man or i don't know because i guess that also is the bigger question of 
do you become Candyman or are you forced to be Candyman? But then it also felt like you were forced to be Candyman by white people. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a um, sort of decision by committee sort mm. of thing. But this took it a bit farther. I think it, it, it made, it brought this manufacturing aspect to it. Yeah. Where we're looking like, okay, we already know he's going to be Candyman, but what he's doing essentially is he should come and fucking kill you. <laughs> 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 but he's had so many interactions with Candyman. Like the the first, I guess, um, we can talk about the imagery of bees because that was kind of annoying in this film. But like the first sort of instance was he kind of, you know, alerted the cops to Sherman, right? Even though you shouldn't really be climbing out of a wall and offering candy to kids. Mm. I thought Herbert the pervert from Family Guy would exemplify that enough, but apparently not. Don't come out of a wall and um, offer candy to kids. Um, but that's kind of where Sherman was, in quotes, surrounded by the swarm. So, you know, the original 1890 candy man, he was slathered in honey and death by bees. So they're, they're bringing that messaging along, further along to the police being the swarm. Um, and gunning Sherman down, right? Mm. So he has the first sort of um, introduction to Sherman, who is that iteration of Candyman. And then with his sisters, or with his sister rather, with sister and friends, where he wasn't allowed to join in and unfortunately he had to hear his sister and her friends dying. And then he stares into the room and he sees to be Candyman. You had a little chuckle then. Why? I thought it looked like a scene from Key and Peele. It looked like a scene. I was like... <laughs> I don't know, there's something very comedic about that scene. And as much as it was meant to derive fear, I think it did the opposite for me because mm -hmm. I chuckled a fair bit. Yeah, you did. <laughs> no, I could just imagine fucking Keegan pulling that shit off, you know? Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it really looked like that. But I, I agree with you. Like, I don't I don't see, like, I see the Be My Victim Candyman. I don't see a Satan servant Candyman. And I guess for those that are religious, maybe me saying Satan has been over five times. So I I guess we'll see if I make it to the end of this recording. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird though. Like I, I, I appreciated the fact that you had to choose to be his victim and yeah. it brought a sense of, okay, you know, you, you, you're fully aware. That, and and the, the fact that Helen and how she was like, can't even fucking set her up. Like you've lost everything in your life. There's no other choice um, other than to accept I feel like um, Genuine's pony is going to be replaced by Tony Dodd saying, being my victim in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this just felt, it felt quite mechanic. It felt very deliberate. Like, I, I think with the messaging, it, it became less nuanced and it was like, I'm doing it for the purposes of black people, so then it's fine. Yeah. And at what point, if, did it just have to be, killed by a cop for him to officially transition into Candyman? Yeah. Or you chopping his hand and him probably bleeding to fucking death to do that? Yeah. So I was like torn because five more minutes before the cops came because he'd already collapsed, I'm like, if he died, would he become Candyman or... <laughs> Are we waiting for that cop's bullet? What's happening? He's like, oh shit, he has to wait another 10 years. <laughs> <Just like>. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably cut the hand off and probably sear it to the fire and put some bandage on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think this is like, um, part of the problem that I had with this film is we had more representation in front of the screen and behind the screen, but then the messaging became so... Um, linear in the sense that Anthony McCoy case in point and I'm not saying he's supposed to be the perfect example of progression in the 2020s but he only saw gentrification from white people and that journalist um, or the critic rather um, was talking about how artists also did that as well but also at the same time it's not just white people that gentrify a neighborhood if you move to a different state and you've got a whole food but then you've also got local markets that sell stuff less than uh, like 80% cheaper than that like Whole Foods in the same fucking neighborhood in the same fucking block then you kind of contribute to gentrification as well don't worry friends and lovers I'm actually still trying to reconcile the fact that I am not white I've just discovered and I may contribute to the facets of gentrification and that's what bothered me about this film because we're in we're, we're in a place in story 
storytelling in cinema where stories can be told and also in this case reclaimed by the people that it's being told about but then it kind of waters down the actual messaging because it's I guess you can say it's us against them but there is in some cases maybe not me in a par- in our parasite episode but there is the concept of upward mobility right So if you're living better than you lived in your childhood and you're not white, potentially you are contributing to that gentrification. And far be it from me to have to be the one to explain that because it wasn't present or at least it wasn't nuanced enough in this 2021 film. Agreed. And I think I loved, like, uh, I'm just going to repeat myself here. I love the idea. I love the concept. I love the trailer. Oh, this made for a gorgeous trailer. I, I just think that sometimes you need to have just a, a balance. Don't make it feel political in any sort of way. Because I think it came across to that degree at some point. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I'm like, what's, what are we trying to do as a society here? Yeah. And if, if, that's, the, if that's the only way that we see that it should be done and you know you want to double down and die by that flag fair enough yeah it just feels a bit pointing at the evil man and shouting the evil man and nothing else yeah. without solutions without anything and at that point what's the fucking use of it anyway yeah if candy man sat down there and said all right guys this is how we're gonna dejectify this fucking hood <laughs> then you're like oh mate yay <laughs> bring some of the solutions to the table yeah you know he wasn't the nipsey hustle or Issa Rae no like, like f- fucking tell us something yeah even fucking Charlemagne has a show now and he fucking spits out solutions to shit the god's honest trip it's very good tell us yeah. solutions but do you do you think um so so i think we we can both agree that the 1992 film did very well aside from the fact the person that was writing the pen and the person that was very prominent um in the film was white it did very well i think we can both agree that it did very well um and it definitely brought the nuance to it but you know even coming through this episode do you think that the 2021 and the reclaim claiming of a black horror icon was potentially some sort of catharsis because i don't know i don't i don't know if black people openly just sit in their lounge room talking about gentrification the way they did in this film but maybe it's a sense of catharsis like don't worry about us we'll write our own stories fuck off maybe not fuck off yes fuck off yeah i think it's the fuck fuck off aspect of it isn't it and they have a bloody fucking right to feel that they need to reclaim shit reclaim it be bold and chattered territory and shit. I just wanted it to be more. I wanted Candyman to be more. I wanted the storyline to be more. I wanted people to love it. I yeah. wanted it to be the Black Panther of the horror franchise. I wanted to see a reunion and a joyousness of it. I wanted to see people fucking celebrating in the theaters. I wanted to see my fucking timeline blowing up. I wanted to see people being like, mate, we've oh. got it. Oh. We've got oh. it. We do have people crying over shit. Mm. We painted a picture of what we wanted. Can we also point out for our new friends and lovers, we were in Kenya at peak Black Panther release. It was a beautiful time. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah. And I thought I thought Candyman would do that. Mm. I thought it would be a reunion of sorts. Mm. It'll be a, a celebration. Mm. Reclaiming Candyman and being fucking awesome. Yeah. And thrashing the box office because of its fucking awesomeness. Mm-hmm. And knowing full well that when they do another Candyman in 2022, 23, it doesn't fucking matter. It will bring people to the fucking seat. Yeah. Will this? My God, I'm I'm just, I wanted it to be more. And I feel angry at myself that I'm saying this because at the end of the day, I'm going to rate it fucking highly because that's what I'm fucking do. <laughs> then what was the point of this? I'm going to probably rewatch it more times. So, so the networks, the networks will have it think, oh, mate, this is a bugger. <laughs> <laughs> let's find the fucking next thing i'm gonna recommend it to other people i'm gonna recommend it to my friends i'm gonna recommend it to my family and i'm gonna tell them let's watch this i'm gonna make it into a fucking event and you know why because i love black people i love seeing them on screen i love but, to tell the story how, okay now we're getting to this point and only our real friends and lovers have made it this far so i'm going to ask the hardball questions ot 
how does black cinema get further if you're just going to blindly love something? Because you've given a lot of points, constructive points, not just out of pure hate points. And now you're just taking it all back by the fact that, okay, it's black, I'm going to support it. So like, where do you straddle the line, my love? Are you 1992 straddling or are you 2021 straddling is the point? Until all's fair in love and war, I will continue straddling that fucking line. Tame my Braxton love and war. <laughs> And if you don't understand that reference, you're the reason why the 2021 film ended up this way. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say, that, like, I get it. I understand where they're coming from. Fine. And I just wanted it to be more and better. And just, yeah, I, I'm just going to leave it at that because at the end of the day, it is what it is. But you don't, but and you, but uh, like speaking on behalf of you, you do love what is happening. There are major moves that are happening in cinema through way of black cinema, but you also don't want to be that fucking ASAP Rocky right next to Rihanna revolutionizing fashion. And he's just there throwing off his blanket. Like he fucking changed the world. You don't want to be that <laughs> either. Do you? I don't want to be that. And again, if you don't understand that reference, you should, because it was the Met Gala and everyone knows the Met Gala. But I just want to see more of this stuff, be it Candy Met or whatnot. You know, we have Nollywood fucking making moves. Yeah. Maybe we'll give more of that a go and probably record more of those podcasts. Banana fall on you. Yeah. Because I have me love. Kenya's industry, baby. <laughs> We're going to watch more of that shit. We're going to bring more um, uh, Rafiki and more Nairobi Half-Life to this shit. We do need to bring Nairobi Half-Life, yes. Like, I just want it to be more, to evolve, to be better. And no, let's, let's just be fucking brave. Let's break <laughs> from the mold. If people, because the, the, the next time the person is given a franchise, what, what are we going to do? No, so you say this, but you also say you're going to support it regardless. Yeah, because it's my fucking deity. <laughs> it's you finding treasure and then burying it. And I'll dig it up again once it's safe to do so. Okay. <laughs> I would really love to see a National Treasure OT edition. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think at the end of the day, I, I, I was disappointed that it, it, it wasn't more. Yeah. I really did want it to be something special that people could celebrate it, 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 in a grandiose level mm -hmm. that, that just just transcended or at least do it better than the first one i didn't think it was possible to do it better but at least sit side by side it's possible to do anything better than the first one you know i i I'd fucking die on my grave matrix 2 was better than matrix 1 what <laughs> so there you go you know do shit better wow <laughs> I really thought we got to the depths of criticism, but I guess we got this far. Are you sure? Yeah, I think I'm just delirious at this point. Are you looking more forward to John Wick 4 or Matrix 4? Oh, Matrix 4. I feel like I've watched John Wick quite recently. Nah, John Wick, man. Nah, Matrix. Man. Actually, while, while we're on it, I don't think I'm going to put it in the my recommendations for Four Year Reference. But this is exactly why I love the Jonathan Wickinson universe. Because this 2021 film made us try to like expand what we know as Candyman without making us care. And for me, even if you're a sequel, especially if you're a sequel after how many fucking old almost 30 years you need to do the groundwork you can't do the passion of the christ yeah we love jesus he's a great guy and then we're supposed to already jump on board so jonathan wicker said is great so i don't agree with you is my point <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully that's what people remember. Not all of the um, conflicting feelings that OT had. I think OT wants us just to feel like he loves this film and there's nothing bad to say. Yeah, like... He'll hold you to account, but he'll still give you tints, tints, tints. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, my friends. Not lovers. <laughs> hoo, hoo, hoo. I think I need to sit on an OT, ride it, and snap it off. Because I need to cool down, friends and lovers. Mm. Even though that is a hot affair. Yeah. Let's finish off in a segment we call For Your Reference. OT. If you want to see Yaya in his fucking full glory, I recommend Watchmen. Ooh, ooh. Can and I, it has Regina fucking King. Can I just say, when people were like, oh, lucky Regina King, I was like, fuck off, lucky Yaya. Yeah. 
who, 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 who the fuck is Yoko? Know, freaking a gang mate. She's not the face I'm blocking when the sex scenes are happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will reference a very, very recent reference, but also a great example of straddling nuance, complex topics. Roy Wood Jr.'s Imperfect Messenger comedian stand-up special. Ooh. I will not talk about any recent comedian stand-up specials unless you want to hear about it on Patreon. Roy Wood Jr., we fucking love. We love Roy Wood Jr. That was, yeah, that was recent. And he's really the only example I've ever seen about a black American talking about black British people playing black Americans in a way that doesn't feel painful. Mm. Because that's another level. Like, me. Yeah. Me. Will we talk about it? Not now. Me. Yeah, that, that's a, probably a patron thing. Fuck sakes. Anyway. Um, if you want some pain that hurts so good on Twitter and Instagram, we're at For Your F-Pod. Write us an email at hello at f1podcast.com. We're also on Sweetie Man's OG edition podcast if you like to leave a rating and review. And we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.